Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Hey, welcome to the channel again. And today I'm going to talk about manual focus lenses and modern mirrorless digital cameras. Stay tuned, please. So I've been shooting photography semi-seriously since the late 1970s. And when I got my first SLR system, it was a Minolta. Uh, manual focus MD. This is one of the bodies I have, which is an SRT 102. I think the very first uh, Minolta body I had was an SRT 101B. This one is an all manual camera with a battery powered light meter, but the shutter itself doesn't require the battery to be operated. And I'm currently running a uh, aftermarket Polar brand 35mm lens on this camera. Not a great lens. Uh, this is a more recent X700 Minolta MD, and I'm running a uh, nice Minolta MD 28mm lens. This is an f2.8 lens, uh, and so that's a really sweet lens on this. So I've been shooting uh, these film cameras for decades, but in late 2008, I dis discovered uh, this new format called Micro Four Thirds. Micro Four Thirds was the first mirrorless camera format. Mirrorless meaning interchangeable lens but a direct live view camera without a mirror flapping up and down. Instead of an optical viewfinder they have an electronic viewfinder and a screen, an LCD screen. So this is an example of a few years old. This is a Panasonic Lumix G5. My very first Micro Four Thirds camera was a G1 uh, but this is the G5. It's a few generations newer and uh, what we're recording video on is a GH3, uh, so same uh, format camera, just a slightly bigger body, and the camera body is optimized more for video production. Uh, so I've, you know, I have a number of electronic autofocus lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system, but I also really enjoy and I really missed uh, these old uh, manual film camera lenses with their manual aperture rings and the manual focusing uh, ring and having your depth of field scales right on the, the camera on the lens itself. I really missed it and I really like this old glass that I have. Look at this Tokina uh, Minolta MD Tokina with massive glass and this is an f2.8 at all focal lengths 80 to 200 millimeters. Uh, a great lens, a great telephoto lens, kind of a good portrait lens actually. So uh, I was using the, the, the new mirrorless cameras for a while and then it came to my attention and other people uh, began to notice this also. The, the distance from where the lens mounts on the body to the sensor is really short. It's shorter than almost any other mirrorless camera because the sensor is smaller. And what that means is if you have the right type of uh, mechanical adapter you can adapt an old film camera lens to uh, the new mirrorless cameras. And in order to explain what this is all about, we're going to have to get into a little bit of what's called the crop factor. So, what this is about is <clears throat> these old film camera lenses were designed for the 35 millimeter film format, which is a rectangle 24 by 36 millimeters in size. And so, a 50 millimeter lens will give you a certain angle of view on to a full frame uh, film format. Well, the Micro Four Thirds sensor is half the size of a 35 millimeter film frame. And so to get the same angle of view, you're going to need a lens with half the focal length. So in the classic film era, the uh, standard focal length lens was a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, I think nowadays it's a little more wide angle than that, the standard uh, acceptable angle of view. Uh, because of smartphones, it's somewhere around 35 millimeter or 28 millimeter equivalent angle of view. But a 50 millimeter angle of view was standard back in the film camera days. And uh, so to get that angle of view with a micro four thirds, you're going to need a 25 millimeter lens. Now, if you want to go out and try to find an old, film camera 25 millimeter lens to adapt, you'll find that it was you're hard pressed to find anything wider than 28. But I was lucky enough a few years ago to go down to one of my local camera shops here in Albuquerque, which is Kurt's Camera Corral, and sadly they're no longer in business. And I found a new old stock 
It's still unsold in the box, and it was a Vivitar, Vivitar uh, Series 5 lens, 24 millimeter uh, f2.8 in the Nolta mount, uh, and it was probably made in the early 90s, I'm thinking. So I found it for a fairly good price, and if you combine it with one of these mechanical adapter rings, you can mount an old film camera lens to your modern mirrorless digital camera. And the way that works is the adapter rings have a, like in this one, has a Minolta film body lens mount on one side and it has a micro four thirds lens mount flange on the other side. It's just an open piece of metal, a ring, and the distance of the ring, the length of the ring is precisely machined so that when mounted onto the lens and the lens and adapter is mounted to the camera body, it'll give you the ability to focus this lens onto the sensor. And so uh, it works pretty good. But you might notice a few things about it. First of all, it's pretty big. So this is a uh, 20 is a 48 millimeter equivalent angle of view, and the length of the lens is considerably longer than uh, it's noticeably longer than the classic 50 millimeter lens of the day. So it has the same angle of view as a 50 millimeter on a full frame camera, but it's it's even bigger. And, uh, of course, film camera lenses are heavy. They are made pretty durably. And the ring, adapter ring, is a machine from aluminum, and it's not lightweight either. So what you end up with when you're doing manual focusing on digital cameras with these adapted film lenses is you have a kind of a big lens that sticks out on the front of the camera. Let me show you here. Let me uh, take off this digital lens and put on the... Minolta adapted lens, so it's it's a big camera lens. It sticks out. It it definitely makes the camera front heavy. It is nice having your your aperture ring to be controlled right there from the front of the lens, and you can even set it with the camera turned off. You can still see what the not only the aperture is, but you can actually see your focus distance and your depth of field scale without having to turn the camera on. You don't have to look at the screen or anything. So that is one nice thing about it. But they're big and they're heavy. Now, you might ask yourself, why manual focus? Uh, in this day and age of autofocus lenses, haven't we gotten beyond manual focus? Well, there is an analogy. Uh, you might want to consider the analogy of automobiles. Uh, a lot of people like driving with automatic transmissions, but there's still nothing beats a stick shift. A couple of my vehicles are stick shifts, and if I had my way about it, every one of them would have been. But... Uh, I like manual focusing. So one of the benefits, so it really depends actually on what kind of what kind of photography you're doing. If you're doing fast action sports and whatnot, you're going to want the fastest autofocus lenses, on like a like a Nikon or Canon DSLR probably. Uh, but if you're shooting in other kinds of photography, uh, reportage and journalistic and documentary and street photography, you might be better off with a manual focus lens where you can preset the focus distance, preset your aperture, and be ready at an inst and at a moment's notice to bring the camera up to your eye and take the shot without any delay, without any hesitation, without waiting for the autofocus of the camera to find the subject, without worrying about whether it's acquired the wrong part of the image and focused on something you didn't want it to focus on. There are some advantages to autofocus. Another thing is the lenses are fairly small. The lenses, the manual focus lenses are fairly small and they don't take up any battery juice, uh, you know, power from your camera to run. They're strictly manual focus. So I do, I use both electronic autofocus lenses in my micro four thirds and I like to adapt manual lenses. Okay, but it came to my attention just recently that there is a new uh, generation of manual focus lenses being made specifically for the new mirrorless cameras. Not only for Micro Four Thirds, but for Sony E-mount and uh, Fuji X-mount and others. And so I discovered there was one uh, recently that came to mar my interest, which was the Seven Artisans 25mm f1.8. Let's take a look at it. 
So I heard about this lens a while ago and I paid for it with my own money from Amazon and I paid I believe less than $80 so this is less than $80. Now just put this in perspective if you went to a used camera store either in your local town or let's say KEH camera or some online seller like that in the United States to get a nice a Minolta MD lens like this 50 millimeter 1.7 um, and to get an adapter ring <sighs> Where's my adapter ring? Oh yeah, to get the adapter ring for Minolta, Micro Four Thirds to Minolta, you're going to be paying between both of those easily 80 bucks or more probably to get uh, to get that uh, capability. So the fact that this uh, lens, this new lens, cost me about 80 dollars, uh, you know that right there makes me interested. Uh, so it came in, of course, a bigger box with some packing, and what's in it is this box, the Seven Artisans lens itself. And this little package, which was unexpected, this is a uh, cleaning kit, a lens cleaning kit. So you guys remember, maybe you're old enough like me to remember back in the 1970s or maybe 1980s, lens cleaning kits were like this little squeeze bulb with a little brush and you kind of try to squeeze off, uh, brush off the dust off your lens and then had a little bottle of fluid and this terrible lens cleaning tissue that really scratched the lenses. It wasn't really very good. Yeah, we've come a long ways, and I was pleasantly surprised. This came with the lens. This was uh, this was uh, uh, a su pleasant surprise. First of all, there's a pair of gloves in here, and these are extraordinarily cool. These are really thin, probably nylon or some synthetic material, but it has this textured, bumpy uh, surface on the grip, and and it reminds me that this could be the kind of gloves that the uh, that they use, they wear in the factory when they're assembling these lenses. It has that kind of a feel to it, right? So that was pleasantly surprising to have these gloves. They're surprisingly high quality. And of course it comes with the microfiber cleaning cloth and the little cleaning fluid. But that was a little bonus surprise that came with this lens. Let's look at the lens itself. Now, if you're familiar with any kind of consumer product that comes in a package uh, in the last decade or so, uh, you'll probably notice that the presentation of the packaging and the experience of opening the box is, is a lot more uh, considered by the manufacturer than it ever was before. And I think a lot of the credit goes to probably Apple because they pioneered a lot of this presentation and the way the package looks when you open it. But So it's not surprising that you get a little bit of a kind of a nice presentation. You have this nice logo here. We will put that box over there out of the camera view. And it has a nice little felt or whatever uh, drawstring pouch to store the lens in with your Seven Artisans logo and some multilingual brochure uh, information sheets and a little piece of foam and right in here is our lens. So this is a 25 millimeter f1.8 lens. And look at that little guy. Now, I opened this up this morning, Sunday morning, and I was really pleasantly surprised at the build quality. Uh, it really is machined very nicely. Now, if you compare the lettering on the body of the lens, for instance, See if I can focus that. It is probably painted on. It's not raised or anything, but if you compare it to a classic film era lens, it is just about the same quality, I would say. Very readable. And it has a nice uh, locking uh, rear cap, and the front cap is the pinch type removal. So this is a small lens, but it feels like it's machined from aluminum or something fairly substantial. So this is a 25 millimeter lens. Now on a Micro Four Thirds camera, and this is a native Micro Four Thirds lens mount, on the Micro Four Thirds camera this will have an, an angle of view equivalent to a 50 millimeter, your classic 50 millimeter lens. Uh, but look, here is the Vivitar Minolta film lens that's uh, 24 millimeter, so almost the same focal length, with a Micro Four Thirds uh, Minolta MD mount adapter. Look at the difference in size, in length. If you line those two things up, 
this new lens looks like it's almost a, just a little bit longer than the adapter itself. And the reason why is these old film camera lenses were called retrofocus design. And the reason why is they had to be they had to have a long enough flange focal distance to be able to permit the um, camera to clear the the mirror in the body of the lens to clear. I'm trying to find the lens button here. Anyways, inside the SLRs there is a mirror that flips up. That's why they're called SLRs. So the lens has to be mounted forward enough of the mirror to give it room to flip out of the way. So they have a long flange focal distance. And when you adapt them to these mirrorless cameras they stick out quite a way. So if we take our Minolta adapted Minolta lens off now and find our little marking. Where is it? Oh, the red mark right there. And mount it to our Lumix G5 Micro Four Thirds camera. Now look at it. Now look at that. That is a 50 millimeter equivalent lens, and boy, it makes this camera look really small. So let's compare some of the features uh, between uh, this uh, lens and the Vivitar Minolta manual film camera lens. Let's compare those two because they're very similar in focal length and aperture. Okay, first of all, on your classic film camera lens, your aperture ring is a clickable aperture, right? It goes click, click, click between in, in whole f-stop increments between all your various f-stops. This Seven Artisans lens, on the other hand, the aperture ring is continuous clickless aperture and it goes from f16 down to f1.8, continuous smooth, no noise, no clicking. And uh, so you might ask yourselves, well, what's the benefit or advantage, or is there an advantage to having a stepless aperture ring? Well, uh, several advantages. So people that like to shoot cinematography and video on video cameras, uh, they like being able to control the exposure of the shot by turning the aperture ring with a stepless aperture because you can slowly change the exposure via the aperture without these dramatic step-like changes that would happen if you're using this kind of a clicking f-stop lens. Um, one other advantage of a stepless aperture is that if you, you can shoot intermediate f-stops, you can get halfway between f you know 5.6 and f8 or whatever you can do intermediate f stops that you couldn't really do in classic film camera lenses um, now some people on the internet have uh, complained that lenses like this it's easy to bump the aperture ring mistakenly and get the wrong setting now I know what they're talking about and I'll show you a camera that really does have that problem. And this is a made in the Soviet Union Zorki 4. This is a Soviet Union made lens for export made in the USSR. And uh, it has the aperture ring on the front of the lens and it is a stepless continuous aperture. And what you have to be very careful of with this camera lens is you make sure, darn sure, that you haven't bumped it before you trip the shutter. And the reason why is this ring is very easy to turn and it's also right near the, the front of the lens where it would be easy to bump. So this truly is a, a, a lens that you have to really watch before uh, you make your exposure to make sure you have it set right. But if you compare that with the Seven Artisans lens, it is much better dampened. It's not nearly as easy to turn. If you, if you turn the focus ring, which is kind of buttery, smooth dampening, 
A little bit of resistance there feels really nice. The aperture ring has about the same feel to it. So it's not super easy to turn. It's just kind of has that buttery smoothness. It takes a little bit of force. And the aperture ring is mounted on the back of the lens near the flange mount, not up front. So you're less likely to bump it. So so far, I've only been using this for a few hours, but I have not had any problems with moving the aperture mistakenly out of position. So let's talk about another part of the comparison between these two lenses. Is This uh, Vivitar Minolta mount lens is a close-up lens, and it'll focus as close as 0.65 feet. But the focus throw on this lens is almost a half a turn between infinity focus and close focus, right? So and so I've always had a problem with this lens for that regard because, uh, you know, if I'm focusing out on the street and I may be focusing close into something like on a light pole or a sign or maybe someone close up to me, and then I want to focus across the street at some distant object, you have to really turn that thing. There's a lot of motion, multiple movements of your wrist, if you will, and it's not quite as convenient to, to use, and it's a slower lens to operate. But in comparison to that, the Seven Artisans lens, the focus ring is up on the front, and it is about a third of a turn, maybe. So it's about, it's less than a third, it's just over a quarter of a turn of the ring to go from infinity down to 0.6 feet, which is even closer focusing than this macro lens. So this focus is really close, it has a shorter focus throw, and there's some nice ribbed texturing on the side of the lens here and here, so you can just use your fingers, even just one finger, you can sit there and just nicely focus it just the way you want. Really, I'm pre pretty impressed with the way that the build quality, and the uh, surface appearance, and the buttery smoothness of this lens, both the focusing ring and the aperture ring. Now, one of the other uh, differences between the Seven Artisans lens is, and my classic Minolta film camera lenses is most of the Minolta and many other brands of film era lenses have either a five or a six bladed aperture. I think one of mine has an eight bladed aperture, but they're they're regular polygonal shaped uh, apertures. And so when you catch an out of focus light flare in an image, it's going to look like the polygon, like that 24 millimeter Vivitar lens is going to look, look like a, a pentagon. And it's not a very pleasing out of focus rendition. But if you compare that with the Seven Artisans lens, what does this have? Well, as it turns out, this has a nine bladed aperture and uh, it's this is stopped down part way it is a nine bladed aperture and the aperture blades are curved so it gives it a round uh, circular aperture appearance at all aperture settings and this is really important uh, this is uh, something that we never uh, had available to us in the classic film camera era with any kind of lenses that were affordable. M most uh, round aperture looking uh, uh, SLR lenses were really high-end lenses so the fact that you can get a nine blade curved aperture a curved blade aperture uh, lens for under 80 bucks is just uh, incredible you know so Again, that's another one of the attributes of this lens I really like, and I think the brand name, the Seven Artisans name, kind of reflects this idea of that it really is kind of oriented uh, for uh, appreciating the out-of-focus characteristics of the lens. It really has gorgeous bokeh, and uh, especially with this round aperture, circular aperture. Okay, so how does this lens perform optically? Well, I haven't had opportunity to shoot high resolution raw photographs, import them to my computer and examine them close up on my big computer monitor, but the cursory examination I've done is it's pretty good lens. 
I would say this Vivitar Minolta lens is not an exceptional lens, and it, this is probably at least as good, if not better than it. I haven't really examined the corner sharpness on this. Uh, it's probably slightly soft at the wide open apertures, but by the time you get down to f8 or so, I'm sure it's going to be probably a lot uh, uh, sharper corner to corner. Um, micro contrast looks okay. There is a slight amount of pin cushioning, very slight I noticed on the sides on this lens, um, but for video use you'll have to decide if that is ex um, acceptable to you or not, but for still photography that kind of distortion can be easily corrected in post-processing software, so it's not a big deal for still photography. By the way, a lot of these old film camera lenses are not really that good optically. Um, you'd be surprised. Uh, these, A lot of these do have a little barrel distortion. They do have um, some uh, issues uh, like corner softness, especially some of the bigger, wider lenses like this 58mm f1.2, really fast lens that is more of a portrait lens, I guess, uh, and it is pretty darn soft wide open. But uh, another aspect of the build quality is if you look at the uh, reflections of light in the lens itself. Let me focus on the lens if I can. There's multiple reflections of light and you can tell how many surfaces in the internal optical elements are coated. So you see the big bright green reflection of my Venetian blinds behind the camera. That's the front surface of the lens and it is definitely coated because of the coloration but there's several reflections behind that that are white colored and that means some of the internal optical elements are not coated and then there's another greenish blue reflection behind that so this is what you would call multi coated lens but it's not a fully coated lens like for instance let me see is the 50 millimeter what is this let's see this is the 35 millimeter oh this is the 50 millimeter Minolta and the 50 millimeter Minolta is more fully coated, I believe. I believe all the reflections are colored. So it is a fully coated design. So uh, the difference here is in its day, you would have paid several hundred dollars for this lens, this Minolta lens, whereas in, in 2017, you're spending less than $80 for this lens. So there are some uh, tolerances there. There's some uh, compromises that have been made uh, for the sake of of price versus performance, but overall I would say uh, what my experimentation thus far has proven that this is a multi-coated lens, it's pretty good quality, I'm really impressed with the build quality, and my initial uh, test that I did this morning out in my patio room, uh, I did a series of tests, I did some focusing near and far, and you can see how the focus draw works and you can get a sense of the bokeh or the quality of the out of focus parts of the image at f1.8 um, and I did some other tests where I, I tested it for focus breathing now I mentioned one of the attributes of a stepless aperture ring lens is it's good for video use for controlling your exposure but not all lenses that are stepless apertures are actually optimized for video use and only the very expensive ones are. You'd be surprised um, how many expensive lenses are not, are not perfect optically. And one of the imperfections is a thing called focus breathing uh, that is acceptable in still photography but for video use it is noticeable. This lens does have focus breathing and I will demonstrate all of these uh, tests I did here and we'll go to the focus test, uh, the rendering of out of focus areas and we'll look at the focus breathing and we'll cut to that right now.
Well, in conclusion, this is 2017. This is the era of smartphone photography, and the mirrorless digital cameras are being refined better and better every year. And yet, in spite of the fact that autofocus lenses are getting better, here we have an example of a new, newly designed, newly manufactured manual focus lens with a stepless aperture at a price unheard of in the past. I'm really impressed with this little lens. Um, it's going to prove just through future use, it'll prove whether or not it has the photographic quality to stand up to my other lenses, but my initial uh, impression, and you can probably judge from the test footage I shot, it looks pretty good. I really do like the bokeh of this lens, the autofocus rendering. Not that that's that important, but uh, if you want that wide open, uh, soft focus look, it really does look pretty nice. There is some focus breathing, so if you're doing some zoom, uh, some rapid focus changes while you're shooting video, you're going to see that, but that's not always necessarily uh, wise to do in a video. Anyways, um, but so it's not a perfect cinema lens, clearly. But um, I'm pretty impressed with the size, the weight, and the build quality of this lens for the price that you're getting it for. Comparing these two, uh, I would suggest if you're if you have a mirrorless camera and are at all interested in manual focusing as an alternative way of of uh, controlling your photography, you might want to consider a lens like the Seven Artisans and they do come in not only Minolta, I'm sorry, in Micro Four Thirds mount, but they also come in Sony E mount. So definitely something to consider. I again bought this with my own money off Amazon. I have no affiliation with a seller. I'm just a uh, a pleased uh, reviewer of and a pleased owner of this lens and I'm really happy to take this thing out with this little uh, G5 camera that serves as my street photography camera and if I uh, flip the back screen around inwards so you can't see the screen now you're you're not going to be able to chimp as much on the on the street you know take a photo and look at it you can review it in the viewfinder but this is how I like to roll with a manual focus lens with a digital camera is I flip the screen around and so I'm controlling the lens, controlling the camera with the lens controls, and I'm treating it much more like a manual focus film camera. So this is Joe Van Cleve, and this is the new era of modern manual focus lenses designed for mirrorless digital cameras. Why don't you give one a try? Well, until next time, you have yourselves a great day.